Throughout its long history, China created its own unique culture. One unique feature, traditional Chinese medicine, evolved out of a need to help the people fight and survive illnesses and diseases. It's near impossible to find one Chinese person who hasn't seen a traditional medicine doctor or taken traditional medicine. The methodology of traditional medicine has a history spanning several thousand years. Traditional medicine has a complete theoretical system, reflecting the Chinese people's understanding of the human body, the environment and nature. As early as 2,000 years ago, traditional medicine started moving away from simple treatment and started focusing on medical principles and practices. And today, there are at least 13,000 kinds of ancient medicinal books preserved. The Yellow Emperor's Classic of Internal Medicine was written 2,300 years ago, presenting the concept of heaven and human being corresponding to each other. It holds that a person's health and diseases are closely related to the natural environment. It also advocates the medical idea of five internal organs as an organic whole and body and spirit unified. In the second century, Zhang Ji wrote treatises on fevers, creating traditional Chinese clinical medicine and the theory of treatment based on the differentiation of symptoms and signs. Treatises on fevers focuses on a patient's reaction to a disease or the theory that different individuals have different reactions to the same disease and the treatment should be altered accordingly. Among the hundreds of books on traditional Chinese medicine written in the past 2,000 years, the most famous is the 1578 Compendium of Materia Medica. Li Shenzhen wrote this classic over 27 years. It includes 1,892 types of herbal medicine and 100 illustrations. The classification of the medicine conforms with the principle from inorganic to organic, from low grade to high grade. Legends and historical books have recorded many well-known doctors and experts, all who contributed to the growth of traditional Chinese medicine. The most famous are Bian Chue and Hua Tuo. Bian Chue lived in the 5th century and was the originator of the four methods of diagnosis – observation, listening and smelling, questioning and pulse feeling, and examination by touch. He was famous for his accuracy in diagnosis and prediction. Bian also advocated medicine, opposed witchcraft and dedicated his entire life to clinical treatment. As early as the second century, eminent practitioner Hua Tuo of East Han period used the method of anesthesia to perform operations. He invented Ma Fu San, the earliest form of anesthetics in the world. Hua also created the Five Bird Game, an exercise method that has people imitating the movements of animals.
Sun Ximiao is another legendary figure in Chinese medicinal history. He was renowned for his extensive medical knowledge. The emperors of the Sui and Tang dynasties offered him official posts, but he refused, and said settling down to his research, becoming known as the king of drugs. Shen Nong tastes a variety of medicinal herbs is a story that's been passed down generations for thousands of years. Shen Nong, the chief of an ancient tribe, made it his mission to taste a variety of herbs in order to find any herbs capable of curing diseases. Traditional Chinese medicine comes from nature. Herbs, fruits, vegetables, flowers, birds, fish and even insects can be made into medicine. Normally, herbal medicine is made from a plant's root, stem, flower, leaves, seeds or fruit. However, an entire lotus can be made into medicine. Lotus petals are used for blood circulation. Green lotus leaves reduce heat exhaustion. Lotus seeds calm the nerves and the lotus root can increase appetite. Chinese practitioners treat each individual patient according to their physical condition, prescribing the relevant medicine accordingly. Yin and Yang is a philosophy used by the ancient Chinese to explain the changes of everything. Yin, or negative, symbolizes calm and cold, while Yang, or positive, symbolizes active and warm. Yin and Yang represent the two aspects within any object. Chinese practitioners believe that when the movements of yin and yang are deviated or unbalanced, a person will fall ill. The character and taste of a herbal medicine reflects its yin and yang. Using different medicines to regulate and correct a patient's yin and yang is the Chinese herbal medicine's principle in curing diseases. Medicinal herbs must be processed before use. This process is called cook up. The method of cooking up herbal medicine always follows ancient traditions. Traditional Chinese medicine divides medicinal herbs into four categories, monarch, minister, aid and envoy. Monarch is the herbal medicine as the primary medicine in a prescription. Minister helps the primary medicine to display medical effect. Aid suppresses any toxicity or side effects of the herbs. And Envoy has two functions, to act as a mediator among the different herbs and to guide them to the target of the treatment. It's just like a small society, which each herb having its own job to do, but still working together to make sure the treatment succeeds. The process of making Chinese medicine is preparation, wash, boil and steam, section and roast. These steps clean the herbs, reduce their toxicity and change their shapes to increase solubility. Today, large-scale production has replaced traditional manual operations, although it still follows ancient traditions to preserve the natural flavor of medicinal herbs. Traditional medicine has been produced for 2,000 years and today it comes in many forms including ointment, pills, bolus and powder.
Nowadays, family workshops have been replaced by large pharmaceutical factories. Patent medicine has broken through traditional types, producing a variety of types, all of the best quality and effectiveness. These include herbs in pieces, concentrated pills and capsules. Changes to the types of medicines takes into consideration the preservation of natural medicine and the patient's habits. A traditional Chinese medical examination causes no injury and uses no special instruments. In this and many other ways, it differs greatly from Western diagnosis methods. Chinese doctors use their sense organs to gather information and identify a disease or illness. During diagnosis, close communication between the doctor and the patient is vital. This is similar to the methods of psychoanalysis and psychotherapy. Actually, when talking to patients, traditional doctors often ask about family and work conditions. Ancient Chinese understood that the overall contact among internal organs is made through channels and collaterals. The crossover point between channels and collaterals is called the acupuncture point. Stimulation of these acupuncture points can cure disease of an organ via channels and collaterals. This theory has become the ideological basis of traditional Chinese medicine. The basic tool of acupuncture is a silver needle, although nowadays the needle is made of stainless steel. The length varies. The shortest are between half and a whole inch. Needles measuring one and a half inches, two inches or two and a half inches are most commonly used, and the longest needles are up to six inches long. Different needles are used according to the illness. Once the correct body area is identified, a sterilized needle is inserted. It's inserted rapidly, withdrawn and reinserted at a different angle. Rotating and twirling the needle is another method, although it's most common to use both methods simultaneously. The index finger is used to support the needle and the thumb is used for scraping. There are several other methods, such as using the index finger to pluck the tail of the needle lightly and quickly twirling the needle, stroking it lightly to enable energy to circulate rapidly and rotating it very lightly. Following are the two methods of plum blossom shaped needling and acupuncture with cupping. First, sterilize the skin and the acupuncture point. Then press the plum blossom shaped needle with the skin lightly. When the skin turns slightly red, apply a cup over the area 
and blood will soon be forced out from the skin. These needles are for a different acupuncture treatment. Massotherapy is one of traditional Chinese medicine's oldest therapies. The ancient book, Yellow Emperor's Classic of Internal Medicine, details many methods of massage. We use 16 Chinese characters to explain massage, which mean rubbing, twisting, pointing, plucking, shaking and patting. Chinese massage doesn't stress strength, but technique. It has a profound understanding of the body's muscle and skeletal structures. Massage's purpose is to regulate the circulation of energy and blood, mediate between channels and collaterals, and improve nutrition. It can treat such diseases as arthritis, bone hyperplasia, and soft tissue injury. For cupping therapy, glass and bamboo cups in a variety of sizes are used. There are three methods of cupping. One is retention, meaning the doctor keeps the cup on the selected point for a full five minutes. When the cup's removed, pressure is put on the skin under the cup, making the skin slack and the cup easy to remove. It's never pulled with force. Usually a little oil or Vaseline is applied to the selected points. The cup is then moved back and forth, making the skin become slightly red. Chen 然后选择打一个火罐，在背上来回的运动，很快的这个皮肤就变得潮红。
In ancient times, pharmacies were called drug bureaus. Most bureaus were named after the Chinese characters of hun, du, shou, and an, meaning benevolence, virtue, longevity, and calm. In modern times, some drug bureaus are still named Tong Hun Tang, Hu Ting Yu Tang, and Pang Go Shou. Drug bureaus often combine medical services and medicine, offering services like the sale of herbal medicines, processing, preparation, prescription filling, and treatments. This quaint pharmacy best shows traditional Chinese medicine's position in people's daily life. Dark brown drug cabinets, exotic flowers, rare herbs and antelopes horns hung under the porch. And the thick smell of the dark brown soup medicine are familiar to most Chinese. Through their hard work, our ancestors turned herbs, fruit, flowers, birds, fishes and insects into panacea that cured many illnesses. Their hard-working spirit and wisdom are valuable commodities to China. Herbal practitioners would often make house calls, supplying prescriptions for each patient's condition. Even if suffering the same illness, different patients got different prescriptions. Both herb doctors and workers thought of humans as the life and blood of traditional medicine. Drug bureaus often offered free medical services and herbal medicine to poor patients. When epidemics spread through the nation, the bureaus gave away soup medicine to passers-by. These museums are the sites of former drug bureaus. Looking at these ancient buildings, we can imagine just how prosperous the drug bureaus were. Traditional Chinese medicine is regarded as a vital part of culture because it's so closely connected with all people's happiness and well-being. We believe these ancient traditions, enjoyed by the Chinese for centuries, can also benefit all people in all parts of the world. Throughout its long history, China created its own unique culture. One unique feature, traditional medicine, evolved out of a need to help the people fight and survive illnesses and diseases.
China's pharmaceutical industry developed from the traditional medicine industry. There are now more than a thousand pharmaceutical businesses, many of which are the pillar industry in their area. There are over 4,000 types of patent medicine, and 275 are listed in the China Pharmacopeia. Drug supervision and administration units have been set up in all provinces and cities to revise all regulations on drugs. From the revisions, a new set of rules and regulations on the administration of drugs has been formulated. Some relate to scientific research and production, and others to management and application in line with developed country standards. For example, the Code on Non-Clinical Drug Quality Control, the Code on Clinical Drug Quality Control and Quality Control of Production. There's also a Code for Quality Control of Drug Commodities During Production and Quality Control of the Harmful Effects of Drugs. Uh,还有临床药品质量管理规范,就是GCP,还有呢这个GMP,就是药品生产质量管理规范,还有药品经营呢,就叫药品商品质量管理规范,还有药品也使用这个不良反应,这个质量管理规范,就是GOP等等
We developed a new drug called Tian Kun Ning for the treatment of AIDS in 1988. This was done in accordance with the requirements of the US FBI's clinical base hospital. The drug's been tested and approved by international standards. During the past two years, the Sichuan Epidemic Prevention Station has given Tian Kun Ning and another new drug, Chang Shou Bao, to 66 AIDS patients. Results from 14 of these patients are now available. When they took the drugs for six to nine months, blood tests saw the results transfer from positive to negative. When Tian Kun Ning alone was applied to eight patients, seven had much improved health. China's a vast country with many nationalities who have added their own traditional medicines. Besides Chinese medicine, there's also Tibetan, Mongolian, Korean, Dai and Mia medicines. And many of these traditions are also steeped in history. For example, Tibetan medicine has existed for more than 2,000 years. It's made with ox horn, horse's hooves, butter, barley wine, animal fat, and of course, medicinal herbs. At the same time, a number of unusual therapies have been created for external treatments. There are 26 training institutes for traditional medicine in China, including those based in Beijing, Shanghai, Chengdu, Guangzhou and Nanjing. The schools mainly teach such subjects as traditional medicine, acupuncture, massage and Chinese and Western medicine. They offer bachelor's, master's and doctor's degrees. Historically, traditional Chinese medicine was taught throughout the Tang and Song dynasties. During the Qing dynasty, Western medicine was introduced in China. In 1956, shortly after the new China, Premier Zhou Enlai set up four institutes of traditional Chinese medicine in Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou and Chengdu. People could now study for master's degrees, doctor's degrees or postdoctorate degrees. These institutes not only offered training, but also conducted their own research. Since 1956, and especially in the past 10 years and more, these institutes have done research and invented many new types of medicine. These medicines have played an important role in ensuring better health and have benefited the country economically. 
Meanwhile, the teaching methods have kept pace with modern society in order to offer high-quality education in traditional medicine. Chinese universities use multidiscipline and multi-major teaching methods and techniques. The universities also encourage students to research Chinese materia medica so as to promote the modernization of Chinese medicine and the industrialization of traditional medicine. Clinical practice is an important course in all traditional medicine universities. This subject adds to a student's grasp on the theory of traditional Chinese medicine. Universities of traditional Chinese medicine enroll a certain number of ethnic students each year to train senior personnel for ethnic medicines. Since the 1980s, the number of foreign students studying in China has gradually increased. Besides studying the language, many foreign students also study traditional Chinese medicine. 115 foreign students have applied to study for master's degrees or doctor's degrees. They come from mainland universities, Taiwan, Macau, and from as far away as Belgium, South Korea, and Germany. Uh 另外还有比利时的、韩国的、还有德国的。Acupuncture and anesthesia attracted the world's attention as long as 30 years ago. Since then, acupuncture and moxibustion rush and traditional Chinese medicine rush appeared around the world. Every year, thousands of foreign students and visiting scholars travel to China to study or research traditional Chinese medicine.
Uh, my name is Nicole Golding, and I'm from New York City. And my specialty is physical medicine and rehabilitation. And among them, in my specialty, is um, low back pain and neck pain, um, and different types of sports injuries. Uh, we can treat them. We can give them. We can give people rehabilitation. But some people develop chronic pain, and this is what acupuncture is really good for. Um, it's getting very popular in New York City. Everybody's asking for it. Um, they feel that it's somehow uh, less, not invasive, but less, uh, I, I guess, more balancing. And uh, people are becoming very open to the idea of the East and the ideas of the meridians and the channels and the ideas of, of, of balance in medicine. Hello, my name is Scott Kelly. I'm a uh, family physician from San Antonio, Texas. We've allowed, uh, it allows us to treat many diseases that Western medicine has not treated very well and gives us another tool and another opportunity to help our patients. This gentleman here is getting treated with acupuncture for Bell's palsy, facial palsy, which is one of the diseases that Western medicine does not treat particularly well. While we have studied in the United States acupuncture, there's nothing like being in Chengdu to learn how the experts do acupuncture. <laughs> acupuncture is becoming more and more common in the United States. It's becoming more of a uh, alternative to treat me uh, patients than we've had in the past. These students and teachers of traditional medicine are celebrating the end of their studies. Each year, many such foreign students come to China to study traditional medicine, taking the knowledge and techniques back to their own countries. The culture of traditional medicine is deeply rooted in Chinese society and has penetrated the daily life of the people. Health care, or the preservation of health through traditional medicine, has developed a set of principles and methods accepted by most Chinese families. Almost all Chinese understand how to use tonics and the right foods to build up and maintain good health. Traditional medicine can also be used for external treatments, such as fumigating, steaming and bathing. For example, medicinal soup is used for treating both skin and internal diseases.
Some foods also have medicinal benefits. And of course, using delicious food to fight a disease is a popular therapy with most people. Some food therapies use only food, while others use food with an edible herb. Food cooked like this is called medical food. Spring's the season in which everything wakes up from the long winter sleep. Eating fish and rabbit with tonics can arouse your spirit. In hot summer, taking eels or fruit with tonics will keep you cool. In autumn, duck and pigeon are best to keep you warm. And in winter, taking tonics of ten ingredients will help keep you warm and fight off the cold weather. Medical food has a special place in Chinese food culture. It's a wise combination of food and health care. Traditional Chinese medicine's unique theories and therapies have gradually been accepted and loved in many other countries. For a foreigner to understand traditional Chinese medicine, they must study and research it. Traditional Chinese medicine is regarded as a vital part of culture because it's so closely connected with all people's happiness and well-being. We believe these ancient traditions that have been enjoyed by the Chinese for centuries can also benefit all people in all parts of the world. <laughs> 